Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that has yet to perfect its Dabney Coleman impersonation. I'm, I'm Dabney Coleman. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Axis and Allies and Zombies from Avalon Hill and Wizards of the Coast. My zombie girl Claws her way up through the soil She wants me bad But I know that she'll stay loyal She wants a kiss Lanes in like this That bites off my lower lip She's in my heart But wants in my head I'm in love with the living dead She's one of the dead Still smoking hot Yeah, she lost some weight I'm not shallow But I think it's great She once was pink But now she's all gray I kinda like it more this way Axis and Allies and Zombies from Avalon Hill and Wizards of the Coast is a game in which the players, two to five players, take on the role of the various belligerents in World War II. This, of course, is the latest spin on the Axis and Allies genre, and it's the first one that kind of takes on a fantastical element. I am, of course, talking about Soviet infantry. Zombies. I was talking about zombies. The game board is a map of the world during World War II, and it looks just like a lot of your other Axis and Allies game boards. You will notice, however, some of the neutrals do have IPC values, and that will be important coming up. Now, the theme of the game is during World War II, there is a zombie outbreak, a zombie apocalypse. So players have to battle each other even as they are battling this undead massive horde that is infesting the world. Now, this leads to some new core mechanical changes of the game, but the game surprisingly plays similar in many fundamental ways to its predecessors. Now, every round, players are going to go in a specific order. It's the Soviet Union, Germany, the United Kingdom, Japan, and then the United States. And then, of course, you cycle back through these things. But how turns play out is a little different. At the beginning of every player's turn, you're going to draw a card. And these cards have kind of two sections, a top section and a bottom section. The top section tells you where a zombie outbreak is going to occur. That simply means you place a zombie unit on uh, whichever part of the board it sells you to place that unit. It doesn't matter if there's already troops there. doesn't matter yet. You just go ahead and you place the uh, zombie uh, unit right there. Now, the bottom of the card may also give you some advantages. It may allow you to develop anti-zombie technology. It may give you certain other uh, things that will pop up throughout the game. You may also draw a escalation card. An escalation card essentially tells you to draw two more cards and play them out. Things are getting a little bit scarier. Now, after you draw the zombie card, you have zombie attacks. So any of your spaces which contain your units and zombies, they go ahead, the zombies get to try to attack your units there. So the zombie dice have three possible outcomes. They have blanks, they have A for attacker, D for defender. Uh, you roll one of these die for every zombie you have located in the same space with some of your units. And if uh, it comes up D for defender, you are defending the situation, you lose uh, that unit. If you lose infantry, there's some special rules I'll get into in a minute. But essentially, you're going to take hits from the those zombies in your own locations. Next, if the zombies are the only uh, units left in a territory, if there are no other allied or access units in that territory, the zombies essentially capture that unit. You put a zombie marker there and they start to move up on the IPC track just like other units. Now they don't develop technology and they don't develop units, but they do capture territories and that's going to be very important as the game progresses. Next, the game kind of plays out like regular Axis and Allies. Essentially, you move your units into a uh, uh, for their combat attacks. You figure out where you want to do all your attacks, and you move your units there. You then engage in an attack just like you would in Axis and Allies, except these zombies are now a part of it. If there are zombies located in that territory, they too will have an important part to play. At the beginning of combat, you will roll the die. Now again, they'll come up either attacker or defender, and the attackers and defenders have to eliminate their units uh, from the board. Uh, they take them immediately uh, as casualties. Um, I believe that the, the, I don't think either one gets a chance to fire after that. I could be mistaken, but essentially they're eliminated. Then you just roll back and forth all your units and eliminate the other side. If you roll, of course, you know the, the, the number of your unit and below, they hit on the enemy. But if you roll a six, which is actually the, the sixes have a zombie head splattering, you actually kill one of the zombie units. So sixes are actually really good to roll here too. 
But of course, uh, your units only hit on sixes, so all units only hit ever on sixes when it comes to zombies, which is something that's kind of unusual here. Well, you go ahead, you clear away your casualties, and then you get ready for the next round, which will again begin with zombies attacking both of you. But here's the thing. If you choose to eliminate infantry, that infantry doesn't just die. Those infantry units become zombies. Zombies also cannot hit aircraft in the game. Um, and there's a few other little restrictions like that, but generally speaking, that's how combat goes. If the attacker successfully eliminates all of the defending units, he can actually keep going to try to hit those sixes to take out the zombies. That can be dangerous, though, because the zombies generally are going to have better odds against you than you will have against them. Once combat is completed, you can go ahead and capture territories. You do your non-combat moves, just like normal. And then at the end of the turn, you actually purchase your new units, and you place them right there. And originally, you'd buy your units at the beginning of the turn, you place them at the end. Here, you buy and place right at the end of your turn, and then you collect your income. Your turn is over. It goes on to the next player. Now, as zombies become more prevalent in the game, they're going to capture more territory. You're going to get kind of high-traffic zombie areas like the Eastern Front, places in Asia. And what's going to happen is, as the zombies capture more territory, uh, they are actually going to be moving up on that IPC track. Now, that's important because uh, there are a couple of things you're going to trigger endgame here. First of all, if any player, any Axis or Ally player, captures one of the enemy capitals, so for the Axis that would be uh, London, Washington, or Moscow, for the Allies it would be Berlin and Tokyo. If you can capture one of those capitals while still holding all of your own, you instantly win the game. However, if the zombies ever get to 25 IPCs, that triggers the full zombie apocalypse. The zombies essentially can destroy everything, and then you add up the IPC values of all, each side of, of their um, collective IPC income. Whoever has the most IPC income wins, axes and allies, and zombies. So this is kind of a fun new spin on axes and allies. I was... Um, you know, I kind of didn't know what to make of this when it came out. I thought it looked fun and goofy, and generally I, I, I like stuff like that. I like it when, when games can get a little out there, a little weird, uh, and, and have fun with history, too. And I, I thought this game did it very well. Now, as you know, uh, I've said this many times on, on, on the show, um, I'm working on my Ph.D. in history right now, and uh, World War II history, and that, it was Axis and Allies, playing that as you know, a 12-year-old, that kind of sparked my love for World War II history and really got me wondering about it, and that kind of set me on this path uh, that I'm on right now. So I asked as an always has a special place in my heart. And it was fun to see this kind of approached in a new way, in kind of this fantastical way. And it's interesting, too, because it kind of almost makes you wonder, well, what else could they do with it? Could they do something similar with, like, Cthulhu or Aliens or something like that? And, uh, like Harry Dur Turtle Dove's World War series, which is a great series of books about aliens invading the middle of World War II. It's a lot of fun. But I like alternate history themes like this and, and fantastical themes like this. So that's that's really a lot of fun. It'd be, be interesting to see if they take this in some more directions. Who knows? But, but in any event, this was fun. This was so much fun. It was the familiar Axis and Allies, but this added just some new sugar and spice. This kind of injected a new life into it. And it gives, and it gives you critically to some new choices here, which are very interesting. For instance, um, you've, got the, um, you've got those battles, and typically in traditional Axis and Allies, your, your infantry is there for fodder. You bring in infantry to protect your tanks, to protect your planes. That's, why, that's what infantry does in the game, but it, it can't do that here because they will come back as zombies, and so you can kind of sacrifice one problem just to make another problem, a potentially bigger problem, and maybe you do lose that tank, maybe you do lose that plane, because you don't want additional zombies there. And that is a very interesting decision you've got to make in every combat. What do I lose? And so I really, really, <clears throat> I, I really enjoyed that quite a bit. I thought that was just tremendously fun. I like the idea that they, put, they, they would pop up everywhere. Um, uh, also, too, uh, you know, the, those neutrals that have IPCs on them, they're neutral. You can't enter them until zombies appear there. Then suddenly they're in play, and you can move in and take out some of those neutrals, like, you know, like Spain and Turkey and Saudi Arabia and stuff like that. So that's very cool as well that you can bring those, those regions into the game uh, there as well. Um, it's, it's regular access and allies, but there's this bite to it. And I, and I really, really, really had fun with it. Um... The, the zombie technology is fun. You know, you've got things like zombie mind control, where if there's a zombie in your territory, you can move one from your territory to another territory and make it somebody else's problem. Um, you know, you've got uh, uh, a transport. So I, I think we're, if memory serves, I can load uh, zombies and, and move them somewhere else. You've got uh, um, uh, 
the, the artillery, which allows you to kill zombies. Uh, if you've got artillery in a battle, it allows you to kill zombies on a 5 and a 6 instead of just a 6. So there's just some really, really fun stuff here. Um, the way you get tech is, is too, you get the card that says you can get tech, and it's generally you just roll a die. I, I would have liked maybe a better way to get tech, like maybe you could invest IPCs in developing tech in some ways. I think that would have been fun. But still, it's it, it's great. This is this is tremendous fun. And you know, I've seen the price point. This is going on Amazon for like twenty six bucks. It is it is freaking worth it. If you like access and knowledge, you're looking for something fun. You like zombie games, you're looking for something fun. This is phenomenal. I you know not I, I thought I'd get a kick out of this. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. It was tremendous fun. Um, we did play with full five players, and it can be a little long. There is downtime, so I probably recommend a two to three player count. But man, it's fun. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it again. Uh, recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer, of course, is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, on discriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and uh, Dabney Coleman and Alan Rachins. You know, I, I can't do an Alan Rachins. You know, he was bald in L.A. Law, but he had a toupee in Showgirls. Leland. My zombie girl doesn't need me to buy stupid flowers she isn't a raw meat every ounce I bring her she devours I took her home to see mom and dad yeah defenders would any of those headshots